Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Lamentations chapter three, verse five, as well as Jonah chapter four, verse 10. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for being so clear to us and giving us your honesty and your love. We know that you are caring for us and we know that you are seeing us as we do our best even as we struggle but you are a good God you are a faithful God we love you back in Jesus name we pray amen all right you guys Lamentations chapter 3 verse 5 he has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation all right. And so this is Lamentations. And it was suspected that that was written by uh, Jeremiah, but there's no proof or anything that shows it. But um, and when we see this, we realize that Babylon had come and taken Jerusalem at that point, And they were going through great tribulation, great trial. Many people had been killed. And so um, here this represents a person in tribulation. It says he has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. So it's both of a emotional um, state of being and um, a, a physical state of being. So this person is getting the business. You know, they are going through it. They are besieged, meaning um, they've been overtaken, not just being attacked. They are overtaken with the enemy. So they have fallen and so, um, and it says that they're in the, the enemy envelop them, meaning on all sides, not only are they surrounded, they are captured, right? When something envelops something, it's closed in. There is no, it's not just a round or a wrapping. It is a, a complete closure, right? And it says with bitterness and tribulation. So both emotional and physical, all right, this is something that, you know, um, a person who is in tribulation would experience, right? A person who has already experienced the fall. And so um, we know that that tribulation that is coming upon the world today is, um, it has to do with the seven years of tribulation, right? All right. And so um, the next one, which this would imply an unwise bride only because they are seeking the Lord, right? They are crying out to God. Um, those who are not a part of the bride would not cry out to God. Many of them will curse God according to the book of Revelation. But the ones who are crying out to God um, for vindication, for help, they are the ones who would be speaking like this, right? All right. And so... Um, the next one that he gave me was Jonah chapter five, verse 10. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. All right. And so this was um, um, God speaking to Jonah and it's actually Jonah chapter four. I don't know why I put five. There is no Jonah five, Jonah four verse 10. And so um, the, um, this is God speaking to Jonah and talking to him about um, the fact that um, they, that he had invested so much love and so much interest into a plant that he barely, that he just got to know, right? That he doesn't know. It's just a, a physical something that he did not invest any physical labor into and yet he was investing his emotions into it he was investing the part the best parts of himself when he had a job to do for the lord that um was more important right people he was to invest himself in the people he was to invest himself in the repentance of the people he was to invest himself in witnessing and caring about people the city of Nineveh he talked about how many people children cattle all were in this huge city and he was just so ready for the city to fall and yet um he had not loved right he had not taken that love 
right? He he had judged rather than accepted mercy. He he judged rather than um, given mercy. And so um, be, because of that, you could see it in his other actions. You could see it in his other emotions, in other areas of his life. It was all over his life. It was leaking into other places, right? And it says, and the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. So just as quickly as it was there, it was gone. And he was angry because God had taken away this plant that had provided him some shade. And so God was trying to prioritize him, reprioritize him in the same way that he would have said to Adam, where are you? Right. Like it's not that he needed him to to find him. Right. It had to do with him looking within himself. He wanted him to look at the man in the mirror. And so this was a, a great example of um an unwise bride, the thoughts of an unwise bride, the thoughts of an unwise bride will be on things that are not of good character. Right. Things things of this world, things that have a temporal nature, things of the flesh, things that you buy, things that you drive, things that you talk, the, the type of phone you talk on, right? That kind of thing. So you're investing yourself into something that will perish instead of investing into people, investing into things that will not burn up on the Bema right? We need to invest in eternal riches and not in the riches of this world. Um, the kingdom that we're going to um, is going to need an eternal retirement plan, right? We don't need the things of this world and that that's an unwise investment. Therefore, you're talking about an unwise bride, the thoughts of an unwise bride. And we don't know the fate of Jonah. Jonah ends at this point pretty much and we know that this is in the word so somehow this word got through right this word was testified to and we overcome by the word of our test the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony so more than likely Jonah overcame this in order to be able to put this in the word and so we are grateful for that because that means there's hope even now there is hope but when you wait until it's too late that's when you're going to enter into that tribulation state. That's when you're going to enter into this um, unwise bride lifestyle that's going to last for seven years where you're going to have to clean your own garment. So let's go back to the completion verse. Um, it is, let's go back. Lamentation chapter three, verse five. He has besieged and enveloped me with bitterness and tribulation. And so I was looking into Jeremiah and, um, you know, the, there was um, an Ethiopian eunuch named Abimelech. Let me see. Abimelech, yeah. And so um, he was the one who saved Jeremiah from the cistern where he would have died had he not been saved, God, if God hadn't sent someone. So um, because of that, God rewarded Abimelech. And that is hope for the, those who are in tribulation, right? That is hope. This occurred in Jeremiah where most likely Lamentations was written um, just because of the style of Lamentations. They believe it was written by Jeremiah and the circumstances. Um, and so um, here, uh, Abimelech was rewarded for um, his, his having mercy on the man of God, right? He was spared, he was spared um, this horrible thing of, of um, Babylon coming in and taking the people. And so because of that, um, Abimelech was spared um, a trial, a horrible state of being. And so it says here, John Calvin comment, this is from a commentary. I read this, you guys, and Holy Spirit came all over me and told me to um, share this. So I felt his spirit on me on this writing. This is a commentary of John Calvin. Um, and so it says, John Calvin commented that the Holy Spirit intends to show us by rewarding Abimelech that he should give the brethren help 
as far as we can and not to shun any dangers which we may thereby incur. The reward given to the Ethiopian is set before us so that we may not so that we may know that though nothing is to be hoped for hope from men when we are kind and liberal yet we shall not lose our labor for god is rich enough who can render to us more than can be expected from the whole world the whole world can't give you more than god can give you and what good it is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul, right? So it doesn't matter that the world can give you something that's just so extraordinary and rich. Your soul can be lost and that is forever, right? We need to remember in these last hours that the service that we do for the Lord will be remembered and no one can give us more than eternal life. It is the best prize ever. It is a free gift. And when we are working for the Lord and we are giving to the Lord and we are rendering our service to the people of God, he is going to remember that and he's going to reward that as well right? You fear God. So you work for him. You fear God so that, you know, you have eternal reward. Um, God gives us salvation freely, but our acts of service are what God is going to consider in, in this trial, right? Just like with Abimelech. Um, so, um, that was the conflation that the Lord gave me. Um, uh, one of the things that he reminded me of, um, and I'll just testify to this, um, is that, you know, me with shopping, right? I was so concerned with replacing something God had told me not to do. Um, he, he actually told me to stop gardening. Right. And so, um, I stopped my, all my gardening. Cause it was something that would literally take up hours and hours and hours of my day. Like I could literally be outside for six hours working on a tree, planting something, doing something, re-fertilizing, edging, um, doing things that I just like to do out in the yard, especially because I have a baby at home right now. And so, um, yeah, it's something I really liked doing. And he told me to stop doing it. And I'm not the first person who operates in the prophetic word that he's told to stop doing something or to do something that doesn't sound very common. So I, I'm not surprised by that. And so um, the Lord told me to stop doing it because it, partially because it was taking up so much of my time. And um, I, I've been, I haven't done it in a very long time. And um, what one thing I saw is that, oh, I can still have plants in my house. Um, even though, you know, I'm not planting, I can just use fake plants. Right. And so I, I found a great spot to buy fake plants and think the ones that look real, they have to look real for me. And so I found a place and, you know, guys, I was starting to invest time in picking out plants, right? It was taking me just as much time in these stores and then thinking about the next week, what I was going to buy. Cause I only buy maybe one a week cause they're kind of expensive and um, I'll wait till my husband's payday and then I'll go buy it. So like every other week, every two weeks, every three weeks, but it, I was taking so much of my thoughts and uh, on what I was going to do. We don't get rid of one thing just to replace it with another action that is not of God, right? Uh, it, it's wrong to invest. It's unwise as the bride to invest so much time in things that don't concern men's souls and things that are not of the kingdom. God is merciful. God is gracious. Yes, he is, but he's done so much for us whatever he asks us to do is nothing. It's, it's our reasonable duty as the Bible says, right? We are servants that should not come in until the master says come in. And then even when we come in, he says, go and do this, go and do that. And we are to do it. And when we're done, we say we're unworthy servants. We're only doing what is our duty. Why? Because he has been so gracious to us. He has given us things that we do not deserve. And yet we say no to him, 
right? Like how can we say no to him, right? It, it's just a duty that that we, you know, owe him. And, and so he's already given us the eternal life. Why not do his will? Why not abide in Christ? He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, right? If you love me, then keep my commandments. Do as he says, work for him. Don't just point at all the scriptures that talk about grace without talking about the works that go with faith, right? Faith without works is dead, do the work for the Lord. He has done so much for you. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. We give you glory, honor, and praise. There's nobody like you. Thank you for Jonah's testimony. Thank you for letting him overcome, Lord God, by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony, God. Help us to overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, Jesus. Help us to do your will. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, um, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.